It is the most audacious construction project in human history. A vision so radical, it promises to redefine the concept of a city itself. This is the line, a proposed 170 kilometer long linear metropolis slicing through the deserts of Saudi Arabia. The dimensions are staggering, 500 meters tall, higher than the Empire State Building, but only 200 meters wide, a civilization housed within a single colossal structure clad entirely in mirrors. It promises a post-car world, zero roads, zero emissions, a perfectly sustainable ecosystem designed to house 9 million people. The promotional material envisions a five-minute city where all daily needs are within a short walk. And for longer journeys, a hyperspeed transit system running underneath, capable of traveling from one end of the 170-kilometer city to the other in just 20 minutes. The ambition is undeniable. Part of the larger Ineum project, the line is positioned as a blueprint for the future of humanity, a $1 trillion statement. The promotional videos are stunning. The ambition is breathtaking, but there is a vast chasm between ambition and reality. Beneath the mirrored facade lies a series of staggering engineering, economic, and human challenges that its creators refuse to address publicly. The uncomfortable truth is that the line, as promised, defies the laws of physics, economics, and human nature. In this analysis, we unlock the reality behind the render and discover why this trillion-dollar city might never exist. Let's start with the sheer scale. 170 kilometers, that's the distance between New York City and Philadelphia. The volume of material required is unprecedented. Estimates suggest billions of tons of concrete, steel, and high-tech glass. The embedded carbon footprint of construction alone would be astronomical, potentially outweighing decades of its zero-carbon operation. The logistics alone are a nightmare. A traditional skyscraper is built vertically from a single point. The line is a skyscraper built horizontally. How do you deliver materials efficiently along a 170-kilometer construction site? The disruption in energy required just for the logistics are immense. Then there's the structure itself. A 500-meter high wall presents massive wind loads. The continuous facade acts like a giant sail. The engineering required to anchor this structure against high desert winds is monumental requiring foundations deeper than anything built before. And contrary to popular belief, the Earth is not flat. It curves. Over 170 kilometers, the Earth curves by approximately 2.2 kilometers. The line cannot be perfectly straight. The structure and the high-speed rail system must account for this curvature, adding another layer of engineering complexity. But perhaps the most immediate physical barrier is the environment itself. The line is a wall. It completely bisects ecosystems. It blocks the migration routes of land animals that have existed for millennia. It also acts as a massive dam for the natural flow of sand and groundwater across the desert with unknown consequences. And the mirrored facade? It's an ecological death trap for birds. Millions of birds migrate through this region annually. The reflection of the sky and desert will lead to catastrophic numbers of fatal bird strikes. A 170-kilometer-long mirror is perhaps the most hostile architectural feature ever designed for avian life. Furthermore, the project requires massive amounts of water in one of the most arid regions on Earth. Relying entirely on energy-intensive desalination plants, which produce vast quantities of toxic brine, Engineering challenges aside, we must look at the concept itself. The linear city is not a new idea, and it has a history of failure. Architects have experimented with it for over a century. From Arturo Soria y Mata's Ciudad Lineal in Madrid to Soviet proposals. Why do they fail? Because cities naturally evolve radially in circles or grids, radiating outwards from a central point. It's an organic process that maximizes interaction. A line is the least efficient shape for a city, 
it maximizes the distance between points. The line attempts to solve this with hyperspeed transit, promising a 20-minute end-to-end commute. This requires speeds over 510 kilometers per hour. This likely requires Hyperloop technology, which is still largely unproven. And the 20-minute claim assumes non-stop travel. Factoring in acceleration, deceleration, and necessary stops for 9 million people, the real journey time would be significantly longer, undermining the central premise. Now consider the quality of life. The density is extreme. 9 million people in just 34 square kilometers. That's nearly 10 times the density of Manhattan. Living inside a 200 meter wide canyon, while the renders show sunlight and greenery, the reality for residents in the lower levels would be significantly darker, existing in perpetual twilight. The psychological impact of living disconnected from the natural horizon in a completely artificial environment raises serious concerns. Furthermore, the line is designed for unprecedented surveillance. Neom is envisioned as a cognitive city managed by AI. The centralized nature of the design makes it perfect for total control over movement, consumption, and communication. A project of social engineering, which brings us to the most terrifying flaw, evacuation. How do you evacuate a 500 meter tall skyscraper that is 170 kilometers long in the event of a fire or structural failure? Then there is the cost, $1 trillion. This is likely a gross underestimation. The true cost could be multiples of that. The project requires massive foreign investment, but investors are increasingly skeptical of the feasibility and the return on investment for such an experimental concept. And it seems reality is finally setting in. Recent reports indicate that Saudi Arabia is drastically scaling back its ambitions. The initial goal of having 1.5 million residents by 2030 has been slashed to fewer than 300,000. And the 170 kilometer length, it is now expected that only 2.4 kilometers will be completed by 2030, a stunning retreat. So what is the line? It is a masterpiece of marketing, a stunning visualization of architectural ambition. But it is not a realistic blueprint for the future of urban living. It ignores fundamental engineering challenges, historical precedents, and the complexities of human society. The line, as promised, will almost certainly never exist. What will likely be built is a much smaller, specialized hub, a technological showcase rather than a revolution in civilization. The nodes instead of the line. It stands as a monument to the dangers of confusing, stunning renders with viable solutions. The future demands innovation, but it must be innovation grounded in reality. If the line is too ambitious, what would work? Next video, solar punk cities that could exist in 10 years. Subscribe so you don't miss it. And tell me below, is the line a masterpiece or pure fantasy? I'll respond to every argument.